Throughout your career, you've brought these dynamic characters to life on the stage and screen. What is your process like deciding what projects you want to go out for? And what was it about John and the script that attracted you to the role? That's a great question. I'd say, you know, the thing for me that has been most telling uh, as my career has gone further and further, I've been trying to continue to change, you know, what I do as much as possible. I think it stretches you and it works different muscles. So for me, uh, I had been working, um, you know, on darker roles. And I think I, I had really enjoyed playing darker roles and, and darker, you know, subject matters. But I wanted to try something that was fun and silly and romantic and uh, endearing. And I thought this was like the perfect opportunity to do that. Um, so, you know, as I continue to move forward, it's always important for me to go from one project to another and just try and continue to change it up, like I said, and stay fresh and um, try and uh, utilize as much of my abilities as possible. The story was inspired by Lisa's own experiences. What was it like collaborating with her as you brought her personal story to life on the screen? Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, talk about a personal story. Um, for her, I think she had a lot of uh, therapy having written this story and was able to kind of let go of a lot of things that she had previously held on to. She told me that this was the easiest script she's ever written and she was able to write it in such a short period of time for obvious reasons. Um, but that's also kind of intimidating as an actor because you feel like you're encroaching on someone's story and you want to do it justice and you're a little precious about things, but she immediately dismantled all those fears, allowed me to take as many liberties as I wanted. Um, and I was able to collaborate in a way where I created my own personal story for John and was able to journal in, in, in his voice and find out who he was and create a backstory and then presented it to her. And she was like very excited about it. And we were able, were able actually to use a lot of it for the film um, and, and a lot of what the connective tissue is between John and Lisa and what, what actually brings them together is their personal histories. Um, that's one of the big things about the two of them. You and Sophie have this undeniable chemistry. Was that instant? And how were the two of you able to build that trust that you needed to tackle your character's journey while filming during a pandemic? <laughs> it's funny because she's just like, she's such a good actor that it's like, you could, you could, I could have been a goat or a dog and she would have had chemistry with it. I swear to God, she's just incredible. She's so charming. She's so giving as an actress and she just has this bubbly energy that you kind of, it's just infectious. So I don't think I really had to do much. Um, that being said, I was so intimidated working with her, you know, I mean, she's a legend and I was uh, totally terrified of it. Uh, the first, first scene that we ever filmed was one of our lovemaking scenes. And uh, I was in over my head, freaking out about it. And she made me feel so comfortable. And uh, I think it was just one of those things too. You don't really know if you have chemistry, you're kind of just like in the flow of things. And there's a bit of a language barrier. She spoke mm -hmm. English, but, but because she didn't really communicate in English as much as another actress would have, uh, I think we kind of like just let it all out on, on camera. And I think it really, it really played well. And um, it's awesome to see it. Yeah. It definitely does. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is your first major venture into the romantic comedy genre. Did anything surprise you about the experience? What was the biggest takeaway for you? Just to have so much fun. Don't take it too seriously. Be playful. Improvise. Just like, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. I totally got it in my head about like, you know, archetypal, like romantic male leads like Jude Law and Colin Firth and, you know, all the iconic, you know, romantic comedies that we love as millennials. And I just realized, no, the more you do that, the actual, the harder your job becomes, the more you just are, you know, you and just have fun. That's, that's really the key recipe to, to making a good rom-com. Um, but man, do I love it because it just makes work just so pleasant and fun and you don't have to like dwell over, dark stuff and all that good stuff. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a blast. Los Angeles Place uh, has such a profound impact on all of the characters and you have close ties to the city. How has LA shaped the artist that you are today? Oh, wow. Really great question. Yeah, I mean, LA is is my home. Uh, I'm not from there originally, but I went to I went to college there. And I think that was, that's where you sort of learn to become an adult and, you know, 
find what you love. Um, and I have two siblings, my two older sisters both live in LA. So it's just become this, this, this safe place for me. Um, I think anytime you get the opportunity to film in LA, it's like a blessing and you're so happy about it because everything films elsewhere. But the, it's very rare to tell a story about LA um, and to honor it in a way that is, uh, is not only symbolic of, you know, the history of film, which is what Lisa really honors in this film, but also the present day and what, what brings people joy and that it's not just this thing that you see on the movie screen. It's actually a really beautiful place and full of life and diversity. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's just a character in its own right in this film. And that's, uh, that's think something I, I did not know if she was going to be able to pull off, but she sure did. Yeah, speaking of Lisa, uh, music plays such an integral role in all of her films, and I Love America is a tribute to disco. Were you a fan of disco heading into the film? Was there a different appreciation for the genre afterwards? You know what's funny about that is my mom is like upset. My mom used to teach aerobics uh, long before I was around. And uh, she always had like Sylvester and all this different disco music. And it was like, it was like the music. If there's any music that your parents listen to, you're like, please stop playing this music. That was disco for me. Um, I would have rather listened to like, you know, jazz or even opera, but I, I couldn't stand it. And then as I've gotten older, I was like, why didn't you like this as a kid? Like this <laughs> music just makes you move. It makes you dance. And I, I love, for me at least just how much disco music meant to her and how much like LA is a character in the film. So is, so is that form of music. But um, that was actually my, my, like one of the first things I said to Lisa after I saw the film, I was like, this might be like the best music of any film I've seen all year long. You like, I don't know what the budget was for, for our music, but man, you killed it. Cause that music is fantastic. So yeah, I was really, really happy about that. It makes you want to move and dance and have fun major themes within the film is rewriting your own narrative, which is part of the reason why John joins the dating apps. Was there something, was that something that you connected with uh, within your own life? And, you know, being an actor, so much of it is out of your control. How are you kind mm. of able to draw those parallels? Yeah, that's a great question too, because yeah, you do have to draw parallels. I, I personally, I mean, whether I'm lucky or not, have not really had to, uh, envelop myself in the world of dating apps but i have many friends who have and many success stories and whatnot um but i i haven't had to do that so therefore you kind of have to like you said pull from things um and i i definitely think uh as an actor you have to trust way more than you would like to um but i also think it requires you to put yourself out there every single time an opportunity comes your way or an audition comes your way and you just like don't know if it's going to be worth you taking all this time and maybe missing a friend's birthday or whatever it may be just for this thing that may or may not work out and it's the exact same thing um you know with with relationships you kind of have to take this leap of faith you have to put the work in you have to be vulnerable you have to uh try your hardest not only to get to know that as person but really expose those inner layers of yourself and um, that's something John is, is really willing to do. And, and that's also why John, uh, at one point in the film, gets hurt by her is because mm -hmm. he has let those guards down. He has really made this effort and he feels like it's just not being reciprocated. Um, but ultimately, I think they both, they both find that they're just, they're just scared. And that's, that's totally normal. Yeah, as an actor, how do you create this space uh, for yourself to dive into those kind of more vulnerable moments? Yeah, you know, it's for me, I, I actually find those moments um, surprisingly easier than the moments of just being goofy and silly. Uh, I think, I don't know, that's because like I went to acting school and then you kind of have to like let your guard down and go to those places. But um, I think because you know you're manufacturing it, you're making it up a little bit, it can be a little bit easier for you to mm -hmm. not judge yourself. Um, but I, I do think a lot of it is 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 about you know you know what we just said earlier about making it personal for yourself but also um really you have to listen to your scene partner and in, in that moment in the film um i couldn't go too big because if sophie wasn't at that point then it just feels inauthentic so really listening really being um you know, tapped into the other person and making sure that the pain is real for yourself, but making sure it doesn't feel like you're acting and like you're overreacting. Mm. That makes sense.
Yeah. And with the film dropping later this month, what do you hope audiences take away after they see it? I hope it's it's an escape, really. I think we 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 need some some life and love and laughs. And I think uh this film provides all those things. And I think it's just a it's a nice way to take a step away from your phone, take a step away from the news. Um, there's a lot of a lot of stuff happening on our planet right now, and I think uh, it's really, really a nice reward that we we owe to ourselves to kind of escape into a, a film that makes us laugh and makes us happy. And I think this film is is perfect for that. Final question for you. In addition to I Love America, you have tons of exciting projects that are out now, also in the works. Can you tell us about yeah. Ambulance and anything else that you're working on at the moment? Yeah, Ambulance is coming out. It just came out actually worldwide, but officially came out in America. Uh, on April 8th, which is a fun, high octane, very thrilling Michael Bay film with an incredible cast led by Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, and I play this fun, quirky character who's like totally in over his head and not a professional, but he's freaking out. And um, it's a fun, fun little role and um, very cool to be a part of that film, working with some incredible, incredible actors and, and filmmakers. Um, and, uh, and at the moment, I'm, I'm filming this incredible TV series. We're doing a limited series. Uh, it's a prequel to the John Wick franchise. Uh, it takes place in the 70s. And um, I get to play uh, a pretty iconic character from the franchise named Winston Scott, played by Ian McShane, who's an all-time great. Uh, big shoes to fill there, but uh, having a lot of fun. And um, I'm really excited for the fans to see that because this is going to be a really cool one. I can't wait. 